Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. Again, I am Krista and we're going to be talking about some serious stuff today, but with like a little humorous twist on it because why so serious? You know what I mean? This episode is about the wild ride of growing up. We're going to be talking about me mostly, obviously, because all I can really talk about is like my experience growing up, my experience as a child. Um, for context, I am 28. I will be 29 this year. And yeah, so I have a lot of experience being a child. <laughs> so <laughs> let's jump right into it. Uh, the awkward stages of growing up is our first topic. The awkward stages of growing up. So, oh my God. I feel like it's so different nowadays with how society is, but growing up in like the 90s, early 2000s, I look at some of the kids nowadays and I'm like, I didn't even know what makeup was. And if I did know what, what it was, it was like from Claire's, like the little like, uh, colorful lip glosses that when you put it on it didn't even like show up as a color and the like bright pink uh, you know blush that you would put right here on your on your apples of, of your cheeks and yeah like <laughs> um, and my mom would probably only let me use it like on the weekend or when we were I don't know doing some silly event or something you know what I mean so, but nowadays you see these kids literally looking like me right now with this amount of makeup on and they're like five and I'm like, what is going on? That is insanity, but to each their own. And it was obviously a different time. I have, <laughs> I'm jumping, but you know, we had all of the fun nine 90s things and we had all of the awesome shows growing up, Courage the Cowardly Dog, uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Spongebob, uh, Powerpuff Girls. I mean, the list goes on and on. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that was obviously like little me, little, little Krista. And then I remember my teenage years. Now we're going to get awkward. Um, do you guys remember Awkward Turtle? Word. And like when there was an awkward situation, you would just go. Because <laughs> he was upside down. And his little legs. No? Anybody? I might be aging myself right now. But anyway, so growing up, I should probably preface this. Growing up, I was in a military family. And so my we didn't move as often as most military families. However... We did move. We did. Um, so we, you know, I was born in North Carolina. I grew up in California. My biggest memory or my most amount of memories are from Seattle, Washington, and Savannah, Georgia. And then obviously here uh, in Texas. So it was really hard to make friends. I can't speak for all of my siblings, but for me, I could never make long lasting friends. The people that I knew and were best friends during those times and in those places, I, I don't, I, I don't even talk to anymore. I think I'm maybe Facebook friends with them. Maybe like a few of them are my, my friend, but for the most part, I don't talk to them. Um, I don't even like see what's going on in their lives. We are just, it's crazy to think about that we were such really good friends and we would hang out all the time and we would have sleepovers and we would do all of those things. And now looking back, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change those experiences for the world, but it's also like, like, I, I thought I was going to be their, like, long-term friends, which is crazy to me to think about. 
I remember I got my first phone because we were moving from Seattle to Georgia. And I was like, I really want to keep in touch with my friend, my best friends. And so they got me a little flip phone and they, as my parents, they got me a little flip phone and I was so excited and I texted my friends every day and I would talk to them and I would call them and, and then it just like stopped. And then the same thing happened when I moved from Georgia to Texas, same thing. You know, my best friends don't, don't lose touch. We're, be, we're going to be best friends forever and come and visit and da, 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 like, and then again, lost touch. There are still a few people that I have like on Instagram and Facebook, but again, like we don't talk. I'm sure they see, they see things, right? They see my posts or they see whatever, but it's just crazy to think that at one point in time, I would consider them my best friends and come to realize I actually have no idea what a best friend even feels like or like to have a best friend. Like, I don't even know what that feels like to this day, which is so sad. Holy crap, dude. Whoa. Wow. Awkward stages, obviously. A lot of those being school age. Uh, for me, particularly, I was a very awkward kid. Uh, awkward as in I was loud, obnoxious, unapologetically me at all times. I was the tallest one. I was the chunkiest one. Yeah, I was, I was loud. I, I didn't really care um, if people didn't like me and people didn't like me for that. <laughs> um, I got heavily bullied, heavily, heavily bullied. Um, I think the bullying actually started in Georgia, in, sorry, in Seattle. I just wasn't aware of it until I moved. And then I started to think about like situations that I had with people in Seattle. And I was like, oh my God, they were like making fun of me. <laughs> it's so crazy to think about to like now as an adult thinking like back when I was like, what, 12 <laughs> and being so oblivious to people that like, I'm like, oh my God, they're my best friends. They love me. Oh my God. And then come to realize, no, <laughs> they probably hated me. <laughs> I feel like I'm laughing, but this is actually like so serious. I'm laughing because that's how I process trauma. <laughs> when I was getting bullied, it was the crappiest time of my life. It was the most horrific, the most undesirable, the most ugh, feeling time of my life. I was in the depths of depression and anxiety and it was just not fun. And it was because I was heavily, heavily, heavily bullied and I just, I didn't care to keep going at a certain point. I was bullied for literally anything that you could ever imagine. Like I said before, I was loud. I was outspoken. Um, people did not like that. They said I was too loud. They said I was too obnoxious. I was irritating. I was annoying. I was too fat. I was too tall. I was was ugly. I didn't have any friends. I was weird. I had a mole on my nose. I was a slut. I, basically, I was a pick me because I had a lot of guy friends. And so everybody just thought the craziest things about me. Yeah. And I was tormented in the hallways. Um, the school that I went to in Georgia was a very small school. It was a very small town. 
And so it literally only had one hallway and it's like sectioned off into other hallways, but it was just one, like you walked into the front door and it was just one big long hallway. And then every grade level had like their own little like corridor, like um, hallway or whatever. So in between classes, when we were walking to classes, there was also like the little portables outside where I had my German class. Um, but in between classes, I would be followed by a group of guys that were, I was a freshman, by the way. This was like the last year we lived there um, before we moved. And there was a group of guys that would torment me, follow me in the hallway, saying crazy things. <laughs> Their favorite, their favorite one um, was they would just follow me being like, mole, 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 mole. <laughs> oh, I, t it's funny now. It's funny now because I can laugh at it about how stupid they were. <laughs> like how dumb was that? Think of something else, bro. Anyway, it's funny now because, yeah, it happened. Was it the lowest point of my life? Yes. Did I get through it? Yes. Am I so glad that I am alive today? Yes. Unfortunately, people are going to be rude. You can't control other people. What you can control is how you react. And if you love yourself and have a really good support system around you, you can get through everything, anything and everything. That's the little moral of that story. Let's move on. <laughs> social media. Oh my God. Social media, dude. I wanted to start YouTube 10 years ago. <laughs> The first videos that I tried to post were me thinking that I could sing, singing covers of songs that I really liked in my little SpongeBob hat, thinking I'm so cool because I went through a phase, okay? And <laughs> it was insanity. Insanity. I looked back at those and I was like, I cannot believe that I even posted these on the internet. I need to take these down immediately before they are lost in the cloud forever. And that is what I did. And a few years went by and I was like, okay, I'm going to start again. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do makeup because I love doing makeup. I was doing makeup for all the school plays. I was doing makeup for a nonprofit that I worked with um, for all of our events. And I loved it. I was like, okay, let me do a makeup channel. I will be a makeup artist and <laughs> no I did one video and I was like I don't ever want to do this again I don't ever want to do this again so that didn't work and then years went years went by again and I was like okay I'm gonna start again because now I have my business excuse me I have my business I have a podcast let me shoot some videos again let me put out content right because I've always wanted to do YouTube. I just never knew how and what to do and how to do it and, and all of those things. Um, I've already said before, I suck at editing, so we'll see how these videos even turn out. But yeah. And then, you know, things happen where I was like, okay, I don't even have time to do this. And now I'm like, you know what? I might not have time to do it, but I'm going to do it because <laughs> I'm so tired of like wanting to start this and wanting to do it and just not doing it. So I put my big girl panties on and I was like, no, we're going to we're going to do it. So that was kind of like me navigating through social media. I didn't have a lot of social media when I was younger, but I was. I hopped on the TikTok train, I hopped on the Instagram train, I hopped on Snapchat train, I hopped on all of these trains when they were not popping off 
And then I got off of the apps because I was like, okay, it's not even like, what is this? Nobody's posting, nobody's doing anything. And then they popped off and I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> After I've already deleted the apps, cool. So I got the apps again and I've been very inconsistent throughout the years. Um, I just recently have been posting very, very consistently on all platforms. So if you're not already, go ahead and go down to the description and follow all of my social media. It's all WW by Krista. And yeah, and then come back to this video because it's not done. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was social media. That's kind of how I went through social media. I will say today's social media is far different than it was back then. Obviously, with time, things change. I will say it is way more dangerous nowadays. I have worked with children and families for the past 10 years. I am a social worker. That is what I love. That is what I, that's where my passion lies and I'm damn good at it. Oh, I'm damn good at it. Yes, I'm sharing some, some things about me and some experiences. However, in addition to that, I will be bringing awareness to things that are happening in our society that I think needs more attention and maybe some things that we could start a discussion about to hopefully better society because that is that is my true goal and the reason that I live is and the reason that I'm here on this earth today is to do that is to make this a better this world a better place with that being said, let's talk a little bit about family dynamics. So I've already said a little bit about me growing up, lived in a military household. Um, my parents are now divorced. They've been divorced for 10 years. I love my parents and there are obviously certain things that you know I would, I would do as parents because I love the way that they did those things. And then there's also things that I would not do as a parent. My experience, with working with families for this long. There are many family dynamics that work, that don't work, that are dysfunctional, that are functional, uh, and everything in between. So if you are someone, if you're watching this, and you are someone that maybe has a family member that is struggling, maybe you're struggling, Maybe you have a, a family that is not as supportive as you would want them to be in the endeavors of your life. Maybe you are in the LGBTQ plus community and they are not supportive. Maybe you are in a multi-generational family. Maybe you are in a multicultural family. There's so many family dynamics out there, like I'm saying. There's nuclear families, there are extended families, there are everything in between. There is everything in between. So what I can say about that is you can't choose them, but you can love them. And it really is okay to cut out toxic individuals. It is okay to make your own family. It is okay to make your own community. If you don't feel safe and welcomed and loved and cherished and supported, there are other people in this world that will do those things for you. There are other people that are going through the same thing that you're going through and you have a multitude of, of ways to get in touch with those individuals. There's Facebook groups. There are community resources. There are community groups. There are a bunch of things that you can do to meet new people, to connect with new people. You just, you got, you can't be afraid of getting uncomfortable. This is probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been is putting myself on camera, being vulnerable and talking to you guys about some vulnerable, vulnerable topics, like me being bullied. That's not something that I outright 
state to the world. And I am right now. I do things on a daily basis to put myself in uncomfortable situations. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see. Um, and it's really about personal growth. And you can't grow if you are not making mistakes and being uncomfortable. Those are the two main ways that we thrive as human beings and grow. So keep doing that. To recap, we talked about my family, the way I grew up, the challenges that there was only a few challenges that I faced in there. Obviously, there are way more. My 20s were a, a roller coaster ride. <laughs> They're going to be more on the serious side. And if you like that, great. Give me a thumbs up. Comment down below how your family dynamic is if you want to share. Um, it could be the bad, the good, the ugly, the glamorous. It could be all of it. I would love to know. And yeah, I love you guys. Please subscribe if you like to. And yeah, love you guys. A lot of editing on this one. A lot of editing on this one, Krista. Good job. Good, 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 good. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Anyway.